Working around bikes for so long, I've often considered how I might make my ideal bike, and I'm sure that a lot of other mountain bikers have felt the same. But it's not often you actually meet someone that has, let alone someone with such a successful racing career. Yep, today we have none other than G. Atherton with us and his amazing new Atherton trail bike. Now, in case you're not aware, Atherton bikes are actually a fairly new enterprise. And the cool thing about Atherton bikes, as you might have gathered, is it has the Atherton family behind them. So it's got a trio of racing success. Now, at a glance, the bike resembles a fairly standard mountain bike. It's got four bar style rear end on there. It's got regular rear triangle, regular front triangle. But look closer, and that's when you see just how special this bike is. It's got carbon fiber tube set on the frame, and it has a lugs design. That means the tubes are bonded into those lugs, but the lugs themselves are basically made from witchcraft. They are made from powdered titanium using a process called additive manufacturing. So let's find out a bit more about it and why on earth the Aftons decided to go this route. So gee, over the years, all three of you actually have worked with, I actually forget how many companies, but you work with so many different bike manufacturers, suspension tuners, suspension brands and stuff, developing their products to help them make them better, arguably, for the consumer as well as yourselves. What on earth made you want to step away and develop your own bikes? Well, it was something we always talked about. You know, Dan and I would always be at home just chatting about it. You know, it was a bit of a, a pipe dream, something we would love to do, but there was never, you know, a clear way to do it. And like you say, we would spend years working with companies where we would spend a couple of years developing a bike and then switch and move on and spend an, another few years developing a bike and then move on. And it was great and really good for the racing, but there was always a bit of a compromise because you had to fit with what they wanted to do and what their goals were. Mm -hmm. And we would always talk, discuss what it would be like if we had no limitations and the freedom to do what we wanted with no compromise and make the bike as good as we wanted to. So uh, was, was the, the, the paramount thing really to make like your, your premium ideal bike first? Or did you have the, the goal of, hold on, let's, let's, let's make our own bike brand that we're gonna sell. So I guess they're kind of, they are, they are involved together, but you had to make one first, didn't you? Yeah, the two things came very much hand in hand. And you know, from the, the race team side, we knew that we wanted to make a bike that was good, that could perform and you know, as, as best bike as we could make. And then on the other side, we knew that we wanted to create this company what would allow other people to to experience that and and that's the kind of the whole ethos behind it you know we wanted to build bikes that we would ride and race and give to as many people as as we possibly could now both the downhill frame uh, which actually neil checked out a little while ago if you want to watch that video it's underneath in the description uh, both the downhill frame and this trail frame share roughly the same sort of configuration and layout and of course the same manufacturing process as explained before, they have carbon fiber tubes that are bonded into these lugs. Now we have seen lugged bikes in mountain biking in the past. There's various manufacturers that have experimented with it, but not necessarily in the same way as this. Now when it comes to lugs, you get single lap shear joints and you get these double lap or twin lap shear joints. And now gee, just show us a bit about how different these are compared to things I've seen before. Because I've heard horror stories about much older, granted, very different bikes where the single lap joints with twisting in the frame can actually form the bonding to come undone. As far as I know, it's like it's, it's impossible with these, isn't it? Yeah, the, 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 the joint here where the carbon connects to the titanium lugs is one of the strongest points on the bike, actually. Um, like you say, this double lap shear joint allows so much more contact. So the carbon tubing literally slots in, so it's touched both sides, the adhesive holds it in there, which allows so much contact that unheard of for the for the joint to come loose um, and you know that's something we've we've tested the the paces we've put these bikes through is unbelievable you know they've been hammered for for a long period of time um, you know we haven't seen any of them fail the, the strength is absolutely enormous um, and you know the the carbon and the titanium do work well together as as, as products okay and with strength as well so a lot of people still have, and I can't believe they have, a lot of people have alarm bells with carbon still. You know, don't realize what a good material this is. But um, 
This carbon is quite different. So in a lot of manufactured frames with the multi-directional weave of carbon with the layup, that's single directional, isn't it? I say point at it because you've got, you've yeah, got a tube yeah, there. Yeah, it's, it's unidirectional uh, and roll wrapped, which means it's not laid up into a mold, you know, the way uh, carbon typically is. It's, it's railed around something from the outside, um, which means it's a lot stiffer, a lot stronger. Um, it's got a kind of, I forget the term for it, it's like a zero growth thing in the carbon, so you can't have any damage on the inside and not be able to see it on the outside, which is... Um, ah, so, it, so basically, if you do break it, you can see it? So if you have a rock strike or a crash or something hits the frame, if there's damage, you can see it. If, it, if you can't see any damage on it, then it's fine, which, you know, for carbon tubing is, is massive because you don't want to be riding a bike that you don't trust. No. Um, and, and I've seen you wreck things before, so if you say it's strong, I'll, I'll, to I'll totally take that. Um, so in terms of suspension feel, how do you like your bikes to feel? Do you run them like soft? You know, how much, how much sag do you have? Do you run them fast rebound, slow rebound? Yeah, I've always had quite a, a similar feel, you know, as I've, I've changed through bikes over the years, and that's always been quite supple off the top, um, very progressive, so it kind of ramps up and, and catches me for those big hits. I like the, the, the start to be quite soft, and I think that's, you know, riding wet, slippery stuff in the UK, you want that kind of supple feeling at the top. Um, I always run it quite fast, always, always had quite a fast rebound. Again, I think it's that kind of, that gives the bike that quite lively feel, and that's shown in the, in the way we've created these bikes. You know, that was one of the specifics when we were working with the engineers. We wanted the bike to be quite lively. We wanted it to be fun, quite playful. Um, you know, you don't, I didn't want it just sluggish and, and grounded. You know, me, Dan and Rach all ride in a very similar way. Um, a lot of movement, a lot of kind of jumping about. So the bike's quite nimble, it's, it's quite agile. Um, you know, it's, it's quite light to ride. I was, I was going to actually ask, actually, you, you kind of went that way. Um, in terms of geometry as well, as well as suspension feel, do, do you all like different things? Do you like the same things? Um, there must have been some clash in there in, in the directions you were going to go with the frame layout, with that sort of stuff? Um, surprisingly not. We've always, we've always run quite similar setups, and I think that's obviously because, you know, Dan started, I kind of followed him in, and then Rach followed me in. So, you know, we've always kind of gone in a, a similar direction. I think we've all got similar riding styles. Um, you know, Dan and I always run a similar setup with, you know, slack head angle, quite a long frame, riding off the back quite a lot, quite that defensive kind of stance yeah. on the bike. Probably from years of growing up riding steep, wet, muddy, gnarly tracks that Athy's built. And, yeah, sure. You know, that reflects in the bikes. Obviously, you know, the geometry is, is personal to, to anyone that buys these, but the the bikes all kind of have a similar feel to them. They all kind of they all they all kind of follow that that similar vein, and I think that's that's something I quite like in a bike. You know, I, I don't want it to be too twitchy and too kind of awkward to ride. I want to get on a bike and feel invincible and feel brave and and feel like I can you know send anything on it. Okay, right. So let's get onto the actual bike check of this bit now. So I'm going to run. I want to ask you a load of questions about your spec on here and some sizing and that. So let's start with numbers on the frame. So I'd like to know your head angle, uh, your chain stay length, all the sort of the normal stuff. And actually what sort of equivalent size it is, because it doesn't look the biggest to me, it looks quite small. No, it's not enormous. Um, and it's uh, the reach will be 470 on this with a 438 uh, rear end, yep. um, which isn't enormous. Um, I'm six foot two, um, yeah. and I think I run the trail bike slightly smaller because I don't ride a lot of a lot of kind of enduro stuff. I don't spend much time racing it. I'm not after a huge amount of performance from it. I'm riding it for fun in the bike park, just out on rides at home. Getting air, basically. <laughs> and when it's a bit smaller and it's a bit more playful, it's it's more fun to to jump and and kind of move around. You know, it doesn't feel enormous underneath me. Um, and it's a lot more kind of, it's a lot easier to ride. So I think that's why it's not enormous. Um, 65 degree head angle. And so what fork travel, is that like 160-ish? That's 160 or? on the fork, so yeah. So 150 on the back end? 150 rear, 160 on the fork. And I always run the fork slightly firmer. Um, quite a lot of tokens in it. I run about 105 PSI in it. I like the, the back to sit in a little bit more, just because I ride in that kind of defensive off the back sending the front end to everything and yeah, trying to yeah, stay out of trouble. Yeah, classic G attack position. 
Okay, and um, what about sort of, um, so you said 470 degrees, yeah? Yeah. So with your cockpit set up on there, um, that looks like a pretty high rise bar, so 30, 30 mil rise, something like that? Yeah, it'd be a 30 mil rise uh, rental, a um, few spaces under the stem there as well, and probably a 50 mil stem on yeah. there. Um, I like the front quite tall. I like it kind of to be quite safe on the front. You know, I ride off the back quite a lot. Um, and we ride a lot of downhill tracks on these. You know, if I'm going, uh, going out on a trail ride, it's normally us uplifting the downhill tracks we've got <laughs> on trail bikes. You know? yeah. So I'm not doing a huge amount of kind of long climbs. So the bike is set up more geared towards riding downhill or riding the bike park. So do you, do you have a similar sort of cockpit set up on all your bikes or do you have maybe narrower bars on, on a bike like this versus your downhill bike? No, I try and get it uh, as similar to my downhill bike as I can. Um, you know, 785 uh, width on the bar and that would be the same as my downhill bike. Um, okay. Just so jumping from one to the other feels as comfortable as possible. Okay, so you've got the Stans Flow wheels on there. You're running Conti de Baron tires. Um, you've done a lot of uh, development work actually with Conti over the years, haven't you? Was it the De Kaiser that you helped develop? With yeah, them? we've spent a, a huge amount of time with Conti. Um, we were with them for years, and then we had a few years where we, we moved away from them, um, which kind of wasn't out of choice, and then we started working with, with them again recently, um, which is ace, because they're a really cool company to work with. Their development side is incredible. You know, They love the racing. They love the, the product feedback. They're constantly developing uh, the range, and you know, the, the 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 tires what we're developing with them now are, are sick and it's it's cool to be working with someone that's as passionate about it as you are. Have you got a, a go to set? I mean, the Barons actually locally when we used to ride Continental, that was a tire I used here. Works really well on the limestone and the yeah, the Barons. The Barons probably um, my kind of trail riding tire. If I'm honest, a lot of the time I'm going to have a set of Kaisers on here. Again, you know, I'm riding downhill so tracks. A tire. Just something that's going to be a bit more rough and ready and, and can take those kind of rock strikes and, and the steep rough downhill tracks. Okay, so the brakes then. Now this is this is really exciting. So I've heard the Trick Stuff brakes are almost frightfully powerful that it can be hard to get used to them. Um, what size rotor is that? Do you know on there? It looks like a 185. Doesn't it look like a massive one? Yeah, it'd be 185 rotors. Um, the Deratissima brakes. Um, it's, it's hard to get used to to start with. Um, just so much power there. But once you are used to it, it ruins you for going back to any other brakes because, you know, they feel like they're not working. But I know that Neil's ridden a set recently in one of his bikes <coughs> and going between two or three bikes on a shoot, he was actually locking up the front wheel in places because yeah, he found them almost too jabby. It's hard to jump between, but once you get used to them, the, the power is incredible. Um, you know, they're, they're a beautifully built brake. Um, Arguably know, the nicest looking brake levers for sure. Yeah, mm, and the feel lovely. of them is, is incredible because, you know, you're, you've, you've always, you know, everyone's had that feeling on a steep downward track or at the long end of a long run where you're hanging on the brakes trying to get the thing to slow down and, you know, the braking with them is effortless and, you know, it, it, it's so nice to be on a long rough trail and, and feel that light kind of lever pull and, and have so much reaction from them. Right, now on to transmission. So you've got a SRAM transmission going on here with some FSA gradient cranks. Um, is that their downhill spec crank, the gradient? Yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah, the FSA gradient crank. Um, great, great crank, you know, the strength is, is incredible. And, um, you know, that was something we, we, we worked with them on because we said, look, that the force going through these is, is enormous. You know, if you're flat landing, you know, a big step down or something, the, there's a lot of impact there. And, you know, the, the crank is, is bloody strong for how light it is. Same length crank you run on your downhill bike and on the trail bike? Yeah, 165. Again, just for ease of, you know, jumping from one to the other and again, riding a lot of downhill on the, on the, on the bike. I guess, uh, answering my own question here, but you, I guess you don't go for like the slimmer Crank Brothers pedals like the enduro version of the mallet. No, you I stick always, with a I always run one. with the uh, yeah the DH mallet just just because I like the feel of it and I struggle to to get used to the the width if I go to a narrow one and then and jump back on the downhill bike. So are you always a clip rider? Do you ride flats ever? I do ride flats, yeah, and I normally stick them on just for a bit of fun or you know just for a change. Um, there's not really a you know something I would only do on flats and something I would only do on clips. Yeah, um, you know I've. I've had a few World Cups where I've stuck flats on when it's been really wet and muddy. And then, Champere, remember? Yeah, mm. exactly. And then there's, um, you know, there's times where I'll be riding gnarly stuff at home and don't mind doing it clipped in. So I kind of swap between them. I think actually that's that's really good advice for anyone running one set of pedals. It's actually good to chop and change between them. 
So I think if you run clips all the time, you're in danger of getting a... Most people, this is getting getting lazy. Yeah, You can rely on them quite a lot, and actually and it's good to step aside. I love to, to stick a set of flats on because it changes the way I ride. You know, I'm not mm -hmm. doing the, just the same riding with flats on. I do ride differently. Um, I ride a lot slower. I don't know why. And, you know, I'll, I'll feel like I'm flying and Athel will be sat behind me just like, gee, what are you doing? <laughs> but with flats, I just ride a lot lazier, you know, that I'm not getting those fast cranks in between in between turns. But it's quite nice. You but know, enjoy you the feel of and, the bike. Yeah, you do yeah. ride differently and it, I think it's good to do now and then. Nice. Okay, so um, I'm just trying to look at what size your chain is. It looks like about 34. Looks, oh, 32. It's, okay. Um, yeah, 32 with an MRP SXG chain guide, uh, regular 12, is that a 52 on there? No, that's a 1250, 500% gear range. Same rear wheel setup on there, Fox DHX2 shock, and of course the Fox dropper post and the WTB saddle. Um, dude, it's, it's, um, is this like your personal spec bike, or is this one of the bikes? That you're going to be offer as a complete build. No, this is my personal spec. You know, yeah. this is this is the, the the products we race on. This is the products we use at home. Um, to be honest, it's not a million miles away than the the specs that we we're offering for the for the bikes that we're selling. But yeah, this is this is what I run, and yeah, just close to the downer bike as I can make it. I like it. There's a good mix of stuff on here, and I can imagine that some some of the tech nerds out there would freak out. They're like, oh, you know, you're running Fox suspension, but you've got SRAM drivetrain on it. You're like. Oh. You know, it doesn't quite add up, but I like it. You're chopping and changing with the stuff that works for you. Yeah, and I think when you, you know, we do have a bit of freedom with with some of the products what we use, and you know, it's it's so nice to be able to just say, right, this is what I love, this is what works best, this is what I want on the bike, because that's when you ride best, and that's when you're most confident in the bike. I think. Are you proud to have your name on a bike? Yeah, very. It was strange. It was a, a funny feeling, and you know, especially taking it to the races and, and kind of the first time people started to to see the idea. Um, a, a day that will always stick in my mind is the the day we were all at HQ, and we've been working on the Atherton bikes thing over winter, but no one really knew about it. And then the launch day came around, and it was the kind of time to announce it and, and put it out there, and the the feeling on that day, it felt like I was doing a World Cup run, you know, I was, I was nervous, we were all pretty kind of anxious, just how people would take it. And I remember, you know, the news been announced, and then there was a bit of a pause, and then there was just a barrage of, you know, all the social media going off, and, you know, the, the reaction from everyone was incredible, and it was so sick to see how excited people were about it, and how, how behind the project they were, you know, they loved the idea, they loved what we were doing. They, you know, when you meet people that know about, you know, they know so much details about where the bikes are made, how they're made. You know, it's it's amazing to see how passionate people are about it. And you know, that's kind of when you meet people like that and see reactions like that. I think that's kind of reminds you as to why you did it in the first place. So, I mean, there's, there's something on this bike that I, I really like, and I love the little A with the 150 on the back of the seat tube here. Um, but what's your favourite thing? about the Atherton bikes? It must, it must be a feature or a feeling you had on one. There's got to be something cool. My favourite thing on the bike, and um, you know, it's, it's a strange thing to say because of the, the amount of technology and design and, and you know, how complicated the bikes are, is probably the polished A on the front you know, with the, the polished titanium. I just mm. think that looks so sick, but you know, the engineers will probably kill me for saying that. Yeah. Okay, guys, that's everything you need to know about my brand new Atherton 150 trail bike. Hope you enjoyed watching. If you've got any questions, drop it in the comments below. Cheers.